So, um, so let me give you another side of this challenge of applying innovation to the incredible needs that we just heard about from Brian. And don't, don't feel sorry for California. These challenges are no less real. And I'm going to take you to a venture capital board meeting a little bit more than 20 years ago. And seated around the table are investors that each have invested more than a million dollars in my company. And we're demonstrating a new product, not the product that we used to raise the money, but a product that we thought that our board would be really excited about. It was a, a first generation reading machine for the blind. And so I put a piece of paper through the scanner, it recognized the words on the page, and a first generation voice synthesizer spoke out, you know, these are the times that try men's souls. <laughs> but not quite that natural sounding. <laughs> and so the board said, great, Jim, the demo worked. How big is the market for reading machines to the blind? And as the VP of marketing, I said, well, our research indicates that we think it's about $1 million per year. A very awkward silence ensued until one of my investors said, and what exactly is the connection to the $25 million we have collectively invested in this firm? That's the question that my nonprofit organization, Benetech, has been trying to answer ever since. You see, Silicon Valley is this incredible engine for innovation, for creating companies, but it's really good at discarding ideas that don't make a lot of money. And every person in Silicon Valley, whether they're an entrepreneur or an investor, is busy scanning for saying, is this going to justify my millions of dollars and return 10 times my investment with some kind of chance. And so much of what the social sector needs, so much of what humanity needs, doesn't meet that threshold. Now, this isn't because Silicon Valley people don't care. Um, they're immensely proud of the technology and the solutions that they've created. And they actually have some great economic advantage. The incremental cost to give you a piece of software or a piece of content is almost nothing. So we have to come up with solutions to sort of cross this challenge, and let's just call it the profitability challenge. So my nonprofit basically is leveraging that same kind of thing that creates billions of dollars of wealth, but to maximize it for social good. We license technology from the for-profit world, and we try to apply it to the social sector needs. And so if you imagine, sort of, there's the main markets where the tech industry makes all its money. And that's actually what justifies it and what those investors are focused on. And as an entrepreneur, you're promising to make those people a lot of money. Then you have essentially, what about the social good applications of the same technology? And here's where a place where Silicon Valley is actually quite good, where they might give you a free license to their technology, or they might actually host your data or something like this. And this is, I think, what a lot of the tech companies actually do. But then there's this last segment where the needs of the nonprofit sector, the needs of the poor, the near needs of uh, victims of sexual violence don't look like the needs that mass markets have. And that's the gap that often needs to be filled. And maybe it only represents 10% of the information technology needs of, of a given nonprofit group or of a community, but that's the gap that, that my organization tries to fill. And now there are, I'd say, over 100 nonprofit organizations that have a similar objective. And so, just to give you kind of a, a brief flavor of what we do, um, we get asked every week for two or three different solutions for the social sector. In other words, here's a product need, needed by a bunch of different groups across the sector, and people come and say, will you build this? And we have to figure out from this giant pipeline of need, which are the one or two projects we're gonna launch each year, seriously. So, so we might actually build 10 prototypes and then focus on the one where we think something's gonna take off. And so, uh, to give you an example, um, we run the largest digital library for blind and dyslexic people in the United States. And we deliver a book to a disabled student here at Berkeley for 1 15th the cost of the traditional approach by combining the ebook plus crowdsourcing plus um, a copyright exception that means I can scan any book without paying a royalty or getting permission. So, how you come up with a solution like that, not to make maximum money, but to make maximum impact, and eventually we have to break even even though we don't pay our staff Silicon Valley wages. Um, another example is for more than the last 10 years, we've written software for the human rights movement. So how do you use strong crypto and security to actually gather stories of, of human rights abuse across you know, different segments? We've been in over 40 countries, um, for example, helping lesbian and gay groups in Africa secure the data about human rights abuses against there. And the last piece of what we do 
is we operate a labs where we experiment with these new ideas. We take these, these sort of needs. We, we clump them together if we can. Um, and, uh, and so an example of a project that we're in beta test right now is rather than an organization paying to generate their own data collection app, um, we basically will host their data and build their app for free in an afternoon. And the idea is you don't have to spend $50,000 getting a custom app, just build it. And if it doesn't work, what did you waste? A couple of hours of time. So, so that's an example of something where I think the technology sector is building these platform opportunities that lower the cost of using the technology. And the last thing I want to work in is we also operate the sort of the lead volunteerism program for Silicon Valley where we apply Silicon Valley volunteers from Google and Facebook and LinkedIn and VMware to social good projects, uh, whether it's um, Mifos for microcredit, Sahana for disaster relief, uh, Code for America, Wikipedia. But you know, the, the, the desire to make an impact is there in Silicon Valley, and we have to find ways to channel it to effective action to help this giant problem that Brian <laughs> basically identified for us today. Thank you.